Hi everyone, this is a video on the Cobb Douglas utility function. I wanted to explore this function in a very sort of graphical way, but also in terms of economics. The function originates in the 1920s and 1940s by Mr. Cobb and Mr. Douglas, who were trying to model how capital and labor combine with technology to produce output. But this function can also be used to model consumer preferences. So here is the general formula, and there's a few things that we should note. First of all, A and B are just constants. And you can see from the formula that it should be obvious that both X and Y need to be bigger than zero. Otherwise, the utility is zero. And this has a lot of importance. It means that when you're trying to model preferences where or both items need to have a positive value, then this is the sort of function you might want to use. Also, that big capital C is normally 1 when you're talking about Cobb Douglas utility. When you're doing Cobb Douglas production functions, then that represents the efficiency of how technology is combined with capital and labor to produce output. We will be doing this example. Utility is equal to x squared times y cubed. So all the calculations are going to be based on this example. Let's get straight into it. Here is the example that we are doing. As I mentioned earlier, x and y both are going to be bigger than zero. So when you're trying to graph this, it should be obvious that there will be no intercepts because x, neither x or y are allowed to be equal to zero because then the utility is zero and there's nothing on the graph. So once we've got the intercepts out of the way, now let's think about the slope of this graph. Now just going back to very basics, slope is just rise over run. And normally we put x on the horizontal axis and y on the vertical axis. So when you're thinking about the slope, um, one of the things that you sort of you should wonder is what is the sign of the slope going to be? Is it going to be upward sloping or is it going to be downward sloping? Now you don't need any fa fancy calculus to figure out what the sign of this indifference curve should be. Let's take a look at the equation a bit more closely. Utility is equal to x squared times y cubed. Let's say we start at point A on the indifference graph. So we're at A, this is the amount of x that we are consuming, and this is the amount of y that we are consuming. So we're at bundle A. Now, if I were to increase the quantity of x that we're going to consume, and yet maintain the same utility, then obviously my, the y value needs to go down. And you can see that just from the equation. As one side goes up, as x goes up, y has to go down in order to maintain the same utility. Why is that important? Because remember, the indifference curve represents all combinations at the same utility. So it should be quite obvious that in order to increase x, we need to reduce our y value. So we know that the slope is going to be negative. No calculus needed at all. Once we know that the, we know the sign of the slope, we need to consider what is the curvature of this slope. How does that curve change as x increases? Once again, we know that change in y over change in x is the slope. And because we have the utility here, we can actually get to this change of y over change of x through taking the utility function. So if I rearrange this, change in y over change in x is equal to the change in utility divided by the change in x. So what that represents is as x goes up by one unit, how much does the utility change? So this is really the marginal utility of x multiplied by change in y all over change in u. And that part is one over the marginal utility of y. So when you put this together, the rise over run is really just the marginal utility of x divided by the marginal utility of y. So what is the MUX? Here you do need some calculus. You need to take the first derivative of u with respect to x. So if this is our function here, remember, we are just trying to take, we're treating y as constant, that 2 comes down, and we get 2xy cubed um, as the marginal utility of x. And then doing that for y, we get 3x squared times y squared. When you put this together, the x's and y's, there's a lot of cancellations happening, and eventually you have 2y over 3x. That is the marginal rate of substitution. Remember, the marginal rate of substitution is really just the slope of the indifference curve. 
how does this slope change as x increases? Well, we can see here that x is in the denominator. So when the x value increases, the modulin rate of substitution is going to go down. In other words, the curve is flattening as x increases. We can say that the, that the indifference curve is convex to the origin. It bends. At low values of x, the slope is high. At high values of x, the slope is low. Now, in economic terms, what that means is that when you have very little x, you are willing to give up a large amount of y. As you have more and more x, you're willing to give up less of y. Also note another way to sort of confirm this negative slope is by recalling once again that the modular rate of substitution is how much y is given up. And since the modular rate of substitution is bigger than zero, because remember y and x need to be bigger than zero, and if the MRS is 2y over 3x, we know that the MRS is going to have a value bigger than zero. That means you are giving up a positive value of y. So if you're giving up 6 units of y, it means the y value is going down by 6 units as x increases. So therefore, that's another way to sort of check or confirm that the slope is definitely negative. As x increases, y goes down. That's a negative slope. Another thing worth uh, looking at is that the Cobb-Douglas function has a, has a shortcut for calculating the MRS. Now you'll recall that our MRS was 2y over 3x and you'll see that the 2 is actually the exponent of x and the 3 is the exponent of y and that's not a coincidence that's just the way the math works out. It'll always work out like that for a Cobb-Douglas function. So as a shortcut we can say that if your general utility function has these notations, then the MRS is a small a times y divided by small b times x. So we, we know what this graph looks like now. We know that it's got this nice curvature. But now let's look at something called elasticity of substitution. Now what this really means, and it has this notation, is the percentage change in the utility divided by the percentage change in x. This is different from marginal utility of x, which is how much does the utility increase as one unit of x increases. This is what is the percentage change in utility for a 1% change in x. Here's the mathematics behind it. Anytime you're trying to figure out a percentage change, um, what we're trying to do is figure out the change and you divide it by the, the initial number. So this becomes change in u divided by u all over change in x divided by x and that simplifies to change in u over change in x times x over u. Now remember change in u over change in x is simply the marginal utility of x. The elasticity of substitution with respect to x becomes mu x times x over u and if you plug that in, because we know what the mux is, x is just x, we know what the utility function is, and if you put this all together, you'll end up with 2. And you can do this as an exercise, but the elasticity of substitution with respect to y is going to be muy times y over u. And if you do the math, you'll get 3. Now, that's not a coincidence, because remember, our utility function is utility equals x squared times y cubed. So what these exponents refer to is the elasticity of substitution, the ease at which utility increases as x increases. I hope that was helpful. It's a lot of stuff. Uh, there's a lot to sort of talk about, but if you view the function in terms of a graph, it's very important to sort of view it in a graphical way and then understand the math behind it. The economics is simply that these are two goods, they both need to be consumed, and that um, it has diminishing MRS, it has a reducing marginal rate of substitution as X increases.